So good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you followed the office uh, quite quite easily. Uh, I've been struggling myself, so I'm not sure how you guys uh, got the other time. Um, so we moved it away from our kind of uh, Victoria office to the Pennington office like one month, two months ago. So it's all kind of new for me too. So um, I would say take your time also to walk around if you have a coffee break, because just to jump this point, um, of course we are trying to, to in a way use what we are preaching, right? So we are working from our laptops, from our phones, and we, we don't have phones as such in the, in, in kind of on, in the desktop. So we're all using headsets, etc. So just walk around and see how other people live in Microsoft actually around. <coughs> So before I start with kind of my presentation, how many of you actually are really physically already using Skype for Business? A few. Okay. And how many of you went to visit the UC Expo the last two days? Okay, great. So uh, just like Jonathan, you know, Microsoft had a, a massive stand as well on the, uh, the UC Expo, so I spent two, two days there on the walking around, standing around, talking to people. Um, my name, by the way, is Robert Garrett. I'm a, what they call a technology strategist, so I'm helping partners and customers to understand what Sky for Business is all about and if that for example is a, uh, I can help you out with a demo to show what we, we actually can uh, in way provide, then uh, I'll do a kind of a, a quick demo after the presentation, but then later on uh, this afternoon if anybody wants to have a specific question or has a specific question, very happy to, to demonstrate that too. Um, so before, uh, so um, as Jonathan mentioned, there, he, there's a, a lot of technology that goes around at the moment and we, we hear all kind of movements in the market as well about uh, acquisitions, changing and so on and um, coming back to the millennials, you know, when we talk about the world is changing, uh, of course it's from a technology perspective, so we think actually the catalyst of all this changing in our minds is of course technology, but the carrier of this, this change is actually really the millennials, right, the new people that come into the office, uh, coming out of colleges, universities, I used to work from their iPhone, I used to work from the iPad, um, going into the office and of course expect that kind of freedom as well in the office. So with these things in mind, um, we as Microsoft have been kind of setting up this new theme and also the UC Expo we had this thing called the Modern Workplace and I was wearing a t-shirt with Modern Workplace on the back of my, my t-shirt and we're trying to kind of kind of address the, the kind of the changing requirements that the workplace has because of the millennials coming into the, the office, into the workspace, and at the same time, to also the general's point, we will be, you know, working probably longer and we want to be a little bit more flexible when we work from anywhere. So, keeping this in mind, um, work is what you do in the longer way you go, that's really what we're trying to talk about, right? When I'm working in the office today here, where I'm going to sit in the, in the, the Costa Coffee, maybe on the train, I want to really kind of be able to work, and look at my emails, be, be able to communicate and actually do my work. But this is something that has been out there quite a while. I mean, uh, before I joined Microsoft, uh, I was working at Cisco, and anyway, all those different vendors have been talking about this for a long time, right? What has changed, I think, and especially from Microsoft perspective, is kind of the other two things there. So when we talk about work from anywhere, of course it's very important, but from a productivity perspective, over the years, uh, initially, it was all about kind of the individual productivity, right? You were given a task, you were trying to solve that, and sometimes you work with a team about it, around it, and then try to come, to come up with a solution. But what's actually more important <coughs> these days is that you find a solution, whether that you do that on your own, or whether you do that with somebody uh, in your own team, or maybe somebody across the world. And actually, it doesn't really matter that you found that solution as long as you find a solution, right? So, as a result, the team productivity becomes much more crucial, at least to the way we look at it as the marketing at Microsoft. Now, with the team productivity becoming more crucial, it also becomes uh, very important to be able to very quickly integrate, uh, collaborate with other people around the world. Whether you're using a, a Word document, a PowerPoint presentation that you try to, to figure out for the, the next presentation, um, co-creation, rapid integration to be able to collaborate is really kind of one of the drivers uh, that we're looking for within the modern workplace. Now, with that in mind, Microsoft decided to actually kind of focus on five different areas to be able to kind of deliver on those the, this, the thing we call the modern workplace, right? And I'll take you through them and actually the examples I'm going to give you are very much in this kind of business area as well. So the first one is about modern collaboration. So the idea about having a lot of people working together wherever they might be uh, maybe sharing a document, maybe kind of working together, doing a whiteboard, etc. Right? All those capabilities were already available within you know, Skype for Business and linked previously, and also kind of all the way uh, in, in, in Office 365, meaning when you were using kind of, for example, 
uh, PowerPoint uh, online, you could do co-authoring sessions. Now what we have done is we try to kind of make sure that, that we make it even easier, right? So if you want to co-author a document, a word, and you decide that, hey, I don't only want to co-author, but I also want to quick talk to those guys, and then you have a quick office call, you could actually escalate that call straight away, oh, sorry, that session to a, a kind of collaborative session, including voice and video. The other way might be true too. Maybe you are in a conference call and you decide, hey, we have to have a, a look at this document together, and maybe let's work all together on this document. You can now start straight away from your Skype business conference call, go into kind of a, the document that you want to call for, and give either, everybody the right credentials straight away from, from as soon as you've made it available. So it's really making it easy behind the scenes to make everything that's everything is integrated. From an end user perspective, I don't have to worry about it. I want to go off, uh, go, uh, what do you call it? Uh, collaborate, I want to co-author a document, I want to escalate a conference call, that's all included. Okay? That's kind of the first example. Modern meetings is really about making sure that if you're going into a meeting, I've never been in this, into this office, I want to set up a conference call, it must be easy, right? The last thing I want is to faff around for five to ten minutes to figure out is if technology is going to work. I want to make sure that everybody that's in the room will have, of course, the proper presentation skills and, and see the presentations. But anybody outside this room also should be able to very nicely participate. So things like, I mean, we have a roundtable device here in the middle of the room. This looks a little bit uh, strange, maybe for the ones who haven't seen it yet. But the idea is that you have like four to five cameras on this pole, and it actually looks around uh, the room. And so anybody that's actually attending from outside this meeting will see everybody around the room participating. <coughs> but at the same time, they, they actually really included because they can see everybody around the room. That's kind of one example. Um, Surely you have heard about the Service Hub. Uh, we launched it, or we announced it in, in January, uh, yeah, January last year, really. Anybody heard about the Service Hub? So this kind of, we have this kind of Surface Pro and Surface RT device, which really was kind of a, uh, a touch device that we use for, for your laptop, right? The Surface Hub is actually kind of a very large version of this. So you would hang it on the wall. It's like 64 inch or 84 inch, the two different sizes. It's fully touch enabled, as you would expect, and it actually has kind of business built into this uh, device. So your idea is that if you are, for example, in the office and you just want to do a whiteboarding session with one of your colleagues, that's great. But at the same time, say, hey, I, I want to really kind of maybe get a, a request from uh, from uh, different department involved. I quickly enable the conference call, and automatically, while we're actually doing the whiteboarding session, he is also part of this conversation, uh, being remotely. So those are kind of two different types of examples. How we are really trying to work or making it easier to, to set up meetings. <coughs> Sorry. Of course, we have protocol talking later on as well. So they will also give a couple of examples of how they will help with uh, the link room system, which are now called Skype room systems. <coughs> so the, the third kind of focus area is what we call a modern content creation. <coughs> and it's also coming back to kind of the old co-offering side of things, right? Being able to be able to co-offer uh, co uh, and, and co-create the documents. The fourth area is about uh, modern mobility, and the mobility in Microsoft World is not just about devices. I mean, I know we have been presenting kind of different types of devices these days. I've talked about the service app, I've talked about Windows phones, we've talked about continuous <coughs> you, you have a mobile device that you can actually attach a, a little keyboard to, you can then actually attach it to a screen, it's almost like a, a full working PC. But when, when we talk about modern mobility, we don't really want to talk just about the device, but actually about the experience. So if I'm sitting in a train, I probably want to use my mobile to work on my emails. If I'm in the office, I'm going to use my laptop. If I'm, for example, into a meeting room, there's a, a service hub hanging on the wall, I might be using that. And so depending on what scenario I'm in, I want to make sure that the, the system, the environment around me is kind of adjusted to what I'm working on. So if I'm sitting in a train and I forget my mobile, then my mobile is still, of course, mobile, but it doesn't really, it's no good to me, right? So it's really about, being able to take experience, all the emails I was working on, on my mobile, log into my laptop, automatically I see the emails I've been working on, I see the people I've been communicating with. So that's really what the, the fourth area is about. And then the last area is about context and application intelligence. And that's really about the idea that you know we are being overwhelmed with a lot of data, emails, and all that kind of stuff that's going through, um, through in the network, right? And trying to make sense of this is, is, is becomes more and more challenging. So um, today I will be talking about a new voice service we launched in Office 365. And for the ones that are not being familiar with Office 365, it's really kind of our cloud offering for, for the kind of the Office applications, right? So in the simplest form, you could see Office 365 as 
just the workloads that we are hosting in the cloud, which could be Exchange Online, it could be Skype <coughs> Online, it could be SharePoint Online. However, it's not just that, right? I mean, that would be a, a very simple way of in a way, describing the cloud <coughs> work that we have. But on top of that, you should imagine that we have invested, as Microsoft, a lot of effort and a lot of resources into building out this data set and all this capability. So we have a lot of uh, power, um, computing power in, 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 those, uh, in the cloud. And what we have been able to do because of this computing power is to actually start looking at patterns, the way you actually are getting emails into your inbox, the way you communicate with your colleagues and maybe with your customers, and try to make sense of that. And one of the examples we normally give is, is the thing what we call Delve. So one of the Office 5 applications or, or features uh, it is uh, an application called Delve, uh, sometimes also called Office Graph. And we try to do this by looking at the pattern, the way you communicate with your colleagues, as I mentioned, and your, and your uh, customers. It'll figure out that, hey, these are the guys, for example, that I, as Robert, uh, com communicate with. It will also then check out what kind of documents have you worked on, which ones you have, for example, stored on your OneDrive. And automatically, when you go into this delve, it will then pop up for me all the guys that I'm very close to, I'll be communicating closely with, I can see what they are working on. There are all kinds of restrictions you can put in place, like for example, if I'm working on a document I don't want anybody to see, obviously I can actually completely hide it, right? <coughs> but if there's something that is internally fine to be, uh, to be shared, then they can say, hey, a robot is working on the presentation for Britannic, um, there are some maybe some interesting slides I want to borrow from them. So those are kind of different services that we are offer, are able to offer with Office 65 because we are now hosting in the cloud. And it wouldn't make sense to kind of build a complete data center solution out of that for each of the individual customers. Okay, so that's kind of the last area in that sense where we're trying to, to focus on from a, from a modern workplace perspective. Now, we're talking today about Skype for Business. Uh, Skype for Business is not completely new. Obviously, the branding is new. We launched it uh, in May time last year, in June time. We've also been building on this platform for quite a while yet, right? So, in, in, in around 2003, 2005, we started with Live Communication Server. Then we launched, or we changed the name to Office Communication Server. Then in 2010, we changed the name from Office Communication or OCS to Link. And the whole reason we did this is because we were talking and trying to provide the voice capability into, into Link as well, and to OCS really. So by the end of kind of Office uh, OCS release 2, we had a software that we called Enterprise Voice. And Enterprise Voice is kind of the Microsoft term for a PBX replacement, a PBX telephone type of uh, feature set. Um, we were also very conscious that there were a couple of things we, we hadn't really put in place yet. And by moving to Link, we believe we had actually closed those steps with the other vendors out there, and that's hence we, we changed the name. Now, when we moved the name from OCS to Link, we got a, quite a nice uptick in the market. But as soon as we changed the name from Link to Skype, it was complete madness, right? So last year we did the UC Expo uh, again, around this time, and it was just about the time we, we actually were going to launch Skype for Business. And the uptake uh, in the marketing side of things and, and the brand out there was amazing because, of course, Skype <coughs> is very no, well known by the consumer side of things. People have been probably using it for talking to their friends, uh, colleagues, or, or, or kids, and so on. And therefore, the, the idea about moving it to Skype, uh, from my perspective, has been in a way very, very nice. Uh, really great uh, uptake. But we had kind of a little problem because, of course, the Skype brand was out there for the consumer side of things. And so the first guess we got, right? Skype for business, is that free? Unfortunately, no, it's not. Because after all, Skype consumer is obviously focused on consumer sides. Skype for business is really a corporate tool. Right? It's really about enterprise, telephony, collaboration, communication. So the way we kind of support uh, Skype uh, for, for consumers is, is as you would expect, just on the internet, on the web. Um, Skype for business is a completely different story. That's why we're in the Britannic. You know, we have a, a proper support uh, infrastructure in place, you can put it in the cloud, you can put it on premise, you can make it hybrid, etc. And we'll go through all those different options today. Um, now, I mentioned we changed the name to Skype, but actually the reason we were able to do that is because we, we acquired Skype, right? And we paid quite a lot of money for it. I don't know if everybody know, anybody knows, but it was roughly, I don't know, eight, nine billion uh, dollars. So it was a massive investment at the time, which is now probably three, four years ago, everybody said, well, wow, why is Microsoft spending so much money on this? And hopefully now, you know, we, we actually can see the results of this, right? The branding, and actually kind of this is put things in perspective for you, right? So um, nine years of consecutive growth from a, from a link perspective, um, 
79% of all the US companies are either in the process of deploying or actually think about deploying. And we have 100 million licenses already out there using them. From a Sky perspective at the time, we had 500 million um, uh, downloads on the, of the Sky client on the Android device. It was the fourth app ever that actually had done it on the Android platform. We had 50 billion uh, minutes every month being made of video and, and telephony on Skype. And all the international traffic, 38% goes over the Skype network. That kind of actually explains why we bought Skype and we actually pushed it together, right? So, hence we now talk about uh, the Skype business. <laughs> okay, so from that perspective, you know, talk about Skype business. Yes, it has the branding and the name of Skype. We took some of the features of the Skype consumer, which were really handy, into the Skype business uh, platform. One of the features I really like at Skype and we brought it into Skype business is this thing that is always sitting on the top. So with Skype consumer, if you were doing something, it was always kind of, if you weren't focused on the Skype window itself, it would come up like a little icon, you would still see it floating it around. That's what we took over in, in the Skype business as well, which has been brilliant because I don't know about you, but if we are in a, in a meeting and we were using Link at the time, uh, Microsoft meetings are sometimes quite long, so you just kind of put your head to the door, you go mute and you do your emails, and then someone will say, Robert, what do you think about this? And you're trying to scramble for where's my new <laughs> button. And of course, now it's floating around, and I say, hey, I'm mute, yes, I'm there, and yeah, I haven't been paying attention. So those are kind of examples where we took features from Skype consumer to Skype business, but of course, the other way around is happening too, probably a little bit later when we talk about maybe providing some collaborative features to the Skype consumer. On the other hand, obviously, with all this background of OCS and, and, and Link, the whole full Link feature set, of course, is available in Skype and Business, right, as you actually expect. And I mentioned already server, hybrid, and cloud, where you want to put it on premise and the cloud, or anything in between, you can do it, and it's definitely enterprise grade. Um, so, we kind of changed the way we start positioning Skype for Business uh, because we believe we really want to focus from a market perspective on, on both the meeting side of things as well as on the voice side of things. Because if you talk about Skype, Link, Skype for Business, I am a presence almost a given now, right? So instant <coughs> messaging, and presence, be able to see somebody's uh, availability. Hopefully everybody is aware of this, or hopefully everybody is already using some kind of tool to be able to do this. But what we really want to make sure is that from a meeting perspective, from a Skype for Business perspective, we actually are able to do anything we want to do in the meeting. And again, from a voice perspective, we also want to make sure that Whatever scenario you're in, but you want to put it on Pandora in the cloud, we can actually help out with that. So, um, a couple of uh, things that uh, we want to highlight before I go into the demo. So, we really talk about the full meeting solution. As I mentioned, I'm going to talk after, I mean, later on this, this afternoon, I'm going to talk about uh, the voice services of Cloud PBX and obviously the cost uh, devices and how you want to connect it up to, let's say, your telephony network. So, from a meeting perspective, <coughs> A, a couple of things to be aware of. So, if you are using Link, uh, and of course, these Skype business, you can bring up to 250 people into a single meeting. Those people could do all voice, video, desktop sharing, uh, whiteboarding, whatever you want to do. So, from that sense, it really scales very nicely. If you wouldn't, and that is if you take it as an Office 365 service. If you need to have higher requirements, meaning you want to bring more people into a meeting, you can put it on premise. So, you can go up to 1,000 users in a single uh, meeting and everybody can actually collaborate, voice, video, desktop sharing, whiteboarding and so on. There are certain scenarios where even that might not be enough. For example, I'm thinking here about uh, a CXO who's going to talk maybe once every month, once every six months to the rest of the organization. And you might go above those numbers. And in this, those kind of situations, it doesn't really matter where, whether actually everybody is able to do voice video, it's more like a streaming event. And that's really where, and I don't know if it's been mentioned here, where the Skype meeting broadcast comes in, right? So where the presenters are using Skype business, but actually the audience is using just a browser, whether they're using it with a laptop, on a mobile, or on an iPad. Um, and so the idea really is that it will scale up to 10,000 <coughs> users. Now the other thing to be aware of this is, is that Skype meeting broadcast is another service of Sphinx 5. And that's coming back to the, the point I was trying to make before. Certain scenarios don't really um, it doesn't make sense to put it on pants, right? A, a, a meeting that happens every quarter, you're not going to kind of scale it up to 10,000 users to put it on pants. So it's kind of mean broadcast is a service that we provision from the cloud with Office 5, um, and it's very easy to set up. 
And that might be sometimes the reason that you want to have a hybrid scenario, even if, you're, if you decide you want to keep it for the on purpose. So that's kind of a new service we introduced uh, since uh, the 1st of December. The other thing that we uh, announced uh, on the 1st of December, and as I said, I will go a bit more detail later on, is the thing about we, as Microsoft hosts in our data centers, and being able to kind of connect to the telephony network. So in Office 365, I mentioned, you can set up a meeting. You can actually have 250 people into a single, into a single meeting. And if, as long as you use a Skype for Business client, or maybe a web client, you're fine. If you want to dial into this meeting, at the time we had to use what we call an ACP panel, or the Comsec panel, or a Freedom of PT, plus Intercom and PGI. But we have said, well, actually, no, it would be nice if you actually make a direct connection from the Microsoft data centers to the telephony network. And that's what we really did, right? So we provided a, a gateway in there, or kind of a zip trunk in there, and therefore another option would be now to actually use the PSN conferencing dialing capabilities of Microsoft. If you are taking a, an Office 5 license, and you, you want to have this, you can just enable it and yeah, it provides uh, the, the contact details for that meeting. So if you set up a meeting, automatically you'll get all the different phone numbers you would expect. So those are kind of things that we, we have been uh, working on. What else? So I mentioned about cloud projects. I will go a bit more detail uh, later on. But really it's about enabling the cloud PBX feature set, meaning providing PBX feature set in Office 365 and then actually figure out how do we then connect that to the telephony network. As I said, we'll go, go around uh, later on a bit more detail, but you could either kind of connect it back to your on-premise SIP trunks that you might already have, if you have a telephony infrastructure, infrastructure in place. That's one way of doing it. Another option maybe down the line is that maybe you want us to look at Microsoft as another service provider for, for the voice side of things. So that's really where we talk about one of voice with, uh, with cloud begins. And then the, um, the thing about devices, I mentioned, of course, the different uh, endpoints from a video perspective, whether that's a, a service hub, you see that in action there, um, whether it's a round table device, or maybe it's a different type of phone you have. Might have an Android phone, might have an iPhone, and so on. And we want to make sure that whatever device you actually use, you should be able to have that similar uh, experience from this kind of business perspective. And then the, um, the last bit is about, uh, I talked to you about already, is connecting up. So if we are hosted in the cloud, and you would like to use different types of telcos to connect to, to this cloud PDX, then those possibilities are there. Having said all of those things, I thought it might be nice to kind of quickly get a, a quick demo so that everybody kind of sees the, the thing in action, and I can talk around a little bit about the uh, different features. <coughs> Just bear with me, I'm gonna swap over to, um, <coughs> My desktop and uh, clean up a little bit. Okay, and so we're doing the uh, screen mode. So, who hasn't seen Skype for Business at all? Uh, okay. okay, great. <coughs> Does it only work in Office 365? No, no, no. This is one of the, the new kind of service we have come out with of Office 65. Before we had uh, Office 65 in place, obviously we will always kind of talk about the off deployment. Okay, well, in all so, the yeah, so it, there are in a way three options in mind. I mean, the three main options. One is you put everything on premise, like you would do with a, a normal PBX or a normal kind of communication system. You, put, you host everything in the cloud, that could be Office 65 or anything in between. So maybe you want to host it in data centers of uh, Britannic. Uh, or maybe in your own data centers, uh, and maybe you have still kind of a hybrid scenario where you want to use the broadcast service. Okay, so we'll, we'll go over and we'll cover most of those uh, options today. Anyway. Can yeah, you just awesome. have it stand alone on one, on one machine in an in a environment, like in a video room? You, you wouldn't, I mean, this is all about collaboration, right? Yeah, so so right. you want to make sure that. I mean, it's just we've got a really complicated scenario. We don't really want to cooperate with each other, but we want to have video meetings where we can co collaborate with outside people, but we don't want everybody else in the, in in the, the organization to do it. Yeah, well, that's definitely possible. So again, you, you could indeed put it on a single server. Normally, we don't really recommend it because if anything goes wrong with that server, then your capabilities are gone, right? But um, if you just use it for a presence, maybe that might be a solution. 
if you using for the video then you would probably what we call pillar pool but those could be virtual images right so you could actually uh, uh, virtualize the environment and then still make it work on the same server but that's what you want to do. so there are all those different options available definitely so from a from a client perspective i'm going to show you very quickly the the, the client here um, just like any other instant messaging platform right and if you have been using skype you, you hopefully are a little bit familiar with this interface. You will be able to see, for example, your uh, your colleagues, and I'm just going to show you my, um, uh, my 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 own team here. So, for example, I can see people's pictures if they have actually ena enabled it. I can see their uh, their presence, and automatically it should actually pick up your presence. At the moment, I've just set it to a because if I put myself to kind of active presence, then I would be barred by people taking help with this, right? But ideally, you let the system set the presence. So. That means it actually is very tightly integrated with Exchange as well. So it will be able to pick up that you are in a meeting. Because if you have to plan the meeting, I would have done for today, that will pick up saying, hey, uh, Robert is busy, show him red, and he's saying, in a meeting. If, for example, uh, so that's one way of actually setting automatically the presence. The other way is, is if you're using it as a, as a UC platform, right? So if I make a phone call, it will go red and shows you I'm in a call. If I make a conference call, it will say red, and you are in a, it shows you you're in a conference call. And you can see on the right hand side, you see here for your people saying in a meeting, busy, etc. And they, they will change over time when we're talking about, you know, we'll see if change, those, uh, those presences change. Um, in the past, we used kind of different colors. We had kind of all yellow, greenish, and we're like jelly beans, etc. And it was very complicated if you didn't know what the color scheme was, was, was about. So what we have come back now is to go in red, yellow, and green. Yellow being away, green being away, red being busy. But we kind of give a little bit of information behind it saying it's busy because he's in a meeting or he's busy because he's in a conference call or busy in a call. And we, the reason it's, it's important is because if I'm in a meeting, I might be just having put some kind of uh, time out in my diary just to work on a project. I still you know, am in a way able to communicate, but not really, uh, I'd rather have people kind of pinging me saying, hey, well, could you help me with this query? That's fine. If I'm in a, in a conference call, again, as to my point previously, uh, <laughs> normally I'm doing my kind of my uh, my emails. If it's not really kind of one I'm very heavily involved with, somebody pings me, hey Robert, can you help me out with this gear? Yeah, actually I can because I'm just listening in anyway. I'm just, you know, I am anyway. If I'm in a call, I don't really want to be disturbed, right? Because then you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Therefore, you really use this kind of little information you have behind the, the present. So you see in a call that you probably wait. Now what you could do is you could keep an eye on that uh, on that person, saying, "Hey, that person is very much in, a, in is busy, uh, but I want to wait, or maybe in a call, but I want to make sure that uh, as soon as it becomes available, I want to uh, get a little notification, because then I don't have to keep on showing, is he red? Is he red? Is he red? Oh no, he's green. And by the time you know, I might have to miss it. So." Um, so if, for example, Ian now becomes uh, green, then automatically we'll like, get, get a little post saying, hey, Ian is now available to communicate with So those are kind of fairly little things. They seem kind of, you know, irrelevant, but are very handy to, to have uh, available. Now what you should also be aware of is that uh, it's very tightly integrated with your Active Directory. And for, and I don't really want to go technical here, but Active Directory is really kind of your, your, your list of people that are working in the organization. That could be, for example, your email address, right? So if you use a, send an email, then you're familiar with the fact you can set it to an alias. I might have a, a, a kind of an alias set up for email calls, a sales team, or whatever that might be. And as you just saw, I click on my UK PTS team, team, team here. I have set up some groups myself, but there are certain ones that can be set up by the administrator. Because sometimes you want to make sure that if you are rolling this out, uh, you want to set up specific teams that people automatically can see in their uh, contact list. So this, my kind of UK uh, partner team, is, is actually an example of that. Now, why I'm bringing this up? Because, you know, if you try to find somebody, uh, because of this directory, active directory as we call it, you may be able to find people that are working in your organization. So if I'm looking for uh, Carrie, Carrie is uh, my colleague, uh, then obviously she should be actually popping up. So Carrie says here, she's offline for five minutes. Um, and you know, if I want to just kind of uh, send an IM, I just click on that. If I want to send a telephone call or make a phone call, I can do this, or I, I want to make a video call. So you can see, I can actually find all of my colleagues this way by just typing in a name. Now, if what I wanted about to- external people that have can you contact them? Is it, do they have to have Skype names like nope. they do for ordinary stuff, or you just contact them by their email? 
Yeah, so that I was going to be, so thank you very much, that was going to be my next one, so, <laughs> Sorry. you know, that's fine, that's great, so I was thinking about uh, um, uh, Sheridan, um, then Sheridan, oh, you probably not an iconic list, then I'll give an example of, uh, <coughs> who else could I do, uh, oh, Tom, Tom Arbutner. So anybody that actually have people are working with, you know, when we are kind of, you can do federation with people. So if an organization are using, is using Link or Skype for Business, then those people are actually are showing up into your uh, directory as well. If I want to use, for example, people that are not in my, um, uh, not on my partners, or not in kind of my um, uh, organization as well, but people that I have in my personal contact list, that will work too. So for example, if I'm looking at Imra, which is my son, then I can see him too. And why can I see him? Because he actually is using Skype for consumer. Okay, so Skype uh, consumer, we can also federate Skype for business. And as a result, um, I can see uh, whether he's available, he's, he's away and so on. Uh, Imra is my son, so I'm glad to see he's actually not on Skype. He's showing his school. Okay, so it really allows you to very quickly search for people, search for, for names, and actually find the, the context that way. So that at the time that you actually had to remember the extension, the one to three, four from your colleague, and then that's the way you're on the call, that's no longer uh, really necessary. If I wanted to make a phone call, obviously I can still do that, right? So if I wanted to maybe, oh, by the way, the reason actually those people are showing up is because I have added them to my own contact list. So if you, for example, exchange, create your own contact list, your personal one, that will actually, in a way, sync with Skype for Business too. So you might have your team uh, aliases, as we just showed you, you have your own kind of personal contacts that you can enable this way. And then there are, for example, the guys that are, uh, I haven't really kind of put up like this, and I just trying to call this person. So I can just, for example, dial uh, uh, 118, uh, 909-2919, etc. And that will just make a phone call. Now, to your, back to your point, you know, do, do those people all have to have a uh, Skype business? No, I mean, this is just kind of my directory to find those people, just like you on your phone. How would I make that call? If that person actually has Skype for Business installed, or uh, has is using Skype for Consumer, then I can see their presence. For the guys I don't have kind of a, uh, kind of federation in place, or they don't use Skype for Business, I just see the telephone number. Okay, so you can it's just like your telephone in that sense. So I can make those calls that way. Well, <clears throat> so um, the other thing to be aware of is sometimes there are situations where um, I maybe want to kind of contact somebody in Skype, meaning it has a Skype consumer one, especially if you're talking about connecting up with uh, maybe your, uh, uh, your your clients, your customers, and what you could do is you could actually uh, give in a name, Richard, uh, Carter, you probably picked up from my accent, I'm actually Dutch, so what you can do is you can say, hey, I want to check uh, this guy in the Skype directory, <laughs> And actually what you can do is you go directly, like in a Bing search, into uh, uh, Skype directory. So obviously this only works one way, right? So I can actually find the people in the Skype directory this way, but of course consumers can't really find you as a result. Uh, so it's only working one way. Then the last thing which we, um, we, what we could do is we could actually search also for um, skill sets. So maybe, I don't know the name of the person, but I wanted to check out uh, somebody that has some relationship with the data set in Amsterdam. Maybe I want to set up a kind of a tour in, in the data set in Amsterdam. I could do it, this is not going to work now because I'm still on the preview thing, but you could actually do a skill search as long as it's integrated with SharePoint. So if you, ha if you are familiar with SharePoint, you can do kind of skill search, that's what you can do uh, and integrate staff business too. So now, like three ways to find your, your contacts and make communication. One is to just search by name, then search by skill, and obviously the last option would be actually searching by or creating a call by actually giving a telephone call. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm just going to go back and just remove this. Let's see if the um, camera is back online. Not yet. So, um, Stuart, are you online? I am. So, see, what, what we do with Microsoft, with all the kind of um, uh, 
partners we're dealing with, the customers we're dealing with, anybody can actually federate the Microsoft, right? So, and, and anybody can set it up between any kind of company you have. As long as anybody uses links, kind of business, you can set up what we call federation, make this work. That's why I'm asking Stuart online, you can see his presence as well. So I can actually create a, a call. Um, you're, you're being put away, or is it? Oh, not you, actually. Sorry. Yes. So, um, as you see, but the, the, the quickest thing to do is to actually very double click on, on the name automatically escalated to an, an instant message, right? So I can just type very hi, and you know, obviously sit in room, it doesn't make any difference. But that's the way you would actually uh, set up an instant message. Then I can decide, for example, I want to escalate to forest, video call, and so on. So at the moment, I have set up the, the round table device. If I just use this one. Um, what we should be able to do is to actually straight away escalate to, let's say, a video call. Now, as you can see, I can use the device to, uh, to be able to uh, use my video scenario. And that will now straight away make a video call to Stuart. <coughs> I'm going to mute it, because otherwise we probably get some feedback. Do you have a call? Yeah. Awesome. Can you also um, escalate the video from your side? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you see, with a single click, automatically we got straight away into the video call. Now I'm using this device now because it's in the room, right? Um, I just actually have also the, the Jabra speakerphone here because I was going to use it first. Uh, I didn't actually see the right type of device. So the way I normally work is I have in my back uh, a headset if I want to make kind of a personal call. Um, I have this little speakerphone. And what else do I need for you, right? I mean, if the speakerphone will work for, let's say, five to 10 people in the room, that's pretty much my, my office on the go. So if you walk around later on and you see everybody working, you will have either a headset on, they will have maybe a, a cord headset like this, they might have a kind of a Bluetooth headset, because they can, they can sync it with not only the Skype business client, but also the mobile phone, etc. Um, at the moment, I'm using the video kind of uh, capability in the, uh, the roundtable device, but um, if I didn't use that phone, I would use kind of the built-in sort of thing, right? I'm just going to mute you for a moment. Uh, yeah, my, my video doesn't seem to connect. Okay. So um, if I can get carry online later on, uh, I'll try that uh, with her. But the idea is then, for example, now uh, we're on this, uh, this conference call with, uh, with Stuart online. And what I can do is I can say, hey, I could actually share my desktop, or I could share, for example, a presentation. So I had all of those capabilities out there. If I share my desktop, obviously, then Stuart will see all of those, um, all of my whole desktop. If I say I want to just kind of show you my Word document or my PowerPoint, I can be very specific and say, hey, I want to just do a present a program. If I want to kind of uh, present a PowerPoint <coughs> presentation, then I say, hey, uh, I'll upload it to kind of the server and automatically it will be then kind of shared at the same time with other people. Or I can do a, a whiteboard session. So, Stuart, do you want to kind of share your desktop with us if that's okay? While Stuart is doing that, um, I'll show you some other stuff here. On the left hand side, you can see all the people <coughs> in our conference call at the moment. Um, you see uh, at the moment, Stuart is now actually uh, sharing uh, his desktop with us. He's going to present it in a moment, I suppose. And, and so it, it's very easy to kind of quickly desktop share uh, your own, your own uh, desktop with people. What is also really nice is that you don't have to escalate to voice video before you do a desktop share. So coming back to the example where I'm in a meeting, uh, in a conference call, and somebody's saying, can you help me out? Quite often, so yeah, but I can't talk. But I can show you, you know, if you have a problem with maybe a Skype kind of business, how you do certain things. So to be able to kind of share your desktop and actually just I am away while you still on conference call is very handy. Um, okay, great, thanks. And even I could ask for a request control wide and actually then could steer his desktop if he wanted to do that. I'm just conscious of time, so I'm just gonna move on very quickly. The other thing I want everybody to be aware of is that if somebody is in a conference call. Um, and you see Gary actually, I'm going to talk about. Um, 
She was supposed to help me out with this demo, so I have no idea what she's doing. Um, <laughs> it's not really helpful. Um, so I was gonna look at Stuart back. I'll get Stuart back in. Um, Eli, for example, was talking to Carrie, and I'm just using this as an example where we just I aming, right? I could now. Yeah, yeah, well, we were kidding yesterday because, of course, <laughs> we were saying, well, we don't know uh, how full the room is going to be, so he's just going to actually stay uh, in Reading. And then I said, well, you just don't want to show up. You probably have a lot of bad things, so that's how they will think about So, Gary has a question, or Gary doesn't know the answer. What I can do is actually drag, if I want to set up a compass call, how do you do this? Well, in my old system, I would have to put the person on hold and do a star, five, seven, I can't remember, you know what? I'll give you a call back, call the other person, so on. That at least was my experience with Commerce Gold. With, uh, with Skype Business, it's just dragging and dropping. So by just dragging and dropping a person into the conference call or into this IM window, you have set it up. I'll be showing you this for IM. If I escalate to voice of video, exactly the same thing. So I could have done it with Stuart in a video call, just drag somebody in. That's how you set up a conference call. And I can keep on dragging people into it, up to 250 people, or even up to 1,000 if I put it on price. Okay? So it's, it's a very easy way to set up your compass calls. This is, by the way, ad hoc, right? So I'm just on the, on the fly and decide how to do this. The other thing to be aware of is that, um, so this is kind of, at the moment, I'm just showing you kind of the, what we call the context screen. I see my people and so on. I can see my uh, colleagues. We have two or three other views that I want to quickly take you through. So the second view is kind of what we call the, the history view, or sometimes we also call the, the callback uh, button. If you're on a phone, you want to call back somebody, you can say, hey, I want to dial the last number, the last 10 numbers. That's the way you should look at this, right? So it shows you the history of anything I've done with Skype. That could be a phone call, it could be a video call, it could be a conference call, it could be an IM. Um, I always have to be careful when I show you IMs because it shows you the history of the IM. Um, since you already have seen the, the, new, the massive carry, I, oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> the other ones are more uh, contentious. Um, you can actually see what, the, what we talked about maybe yesterday or maybe a week ago, and instead of trying to completely repeat what we said at a time and come to the same conclusion, okay, so what we're going to do next, now I can say, hey, what we're going to do next. And she will then actually also, as soon as I click on this, she will see also the history of this it's a message as well. So it's very easy to set the context and keep on communicating. That's really what it's all about, right? Um, and as I mentioned, you know, whether it's an IM, a video call, so it's being visible there. Of course, we have a dial pad uh, for the, if people want to kind of dial a number. Why would you do this? Well, if you're on an IVR, you talk into it, because normally you would search by names, but if you're dialing to IVR, press one for sales, two for sales, I use a keyboard and I press it there. More importantly, I think, is the, the ones underneath there, is the voicemail side of things. Right? So I can see the voicemails uh, that people have been leaving to me. And if you look at the dates, look at that, February, March, October. Because of presence, and if you look and you use presence a lot, people are not leaving voicemails anymore. Because if I see somebody is busy, I'll wait till he's available. If somebody's out of the office, because of the link you can't spell, he said, I'm away for the last five days, I know he's on holiday. If I'm leaving another voicemail, there's no point. He's going to come back and he's been overwhelmed with voicemails, voice right? So, as a result, the whole way people communicate with each other is different as well. People hardly leave any voicemails, unless the person can't see your presence. So if people Dialing it from outside, they won't be able to see your voice. And then you see why people uh, with the telephone numbers there, especially, they are leaving voices because they can't see my presence. Uh, Ian is our product marketing manager, Skype Business. I can see him, and actually, if he, I know it's a demo, very long time ago, but you can easily see, hey, now he's available, I can give, 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 give him a call back. So this presence really kind of changed the, name, the way people are working as well. Uh, also, interestingly, uh, Normally, if you are phoning somebody, you just pick up the phone and you call that person. That person might be in the middle of something, but automatically, because it's a phone, you know, you pick up the phone and you, you stop your conversation. With presence, it's, it's different. Even if you see somebody green, at least in Microsoft, you can see somebody's green, it means, hey, they are available, they could, you could communicate with that person. But the etiquette has changed. So even if some people are green, I always say, hey, do you have a moment to answer my question? And then that person says, oh, give me two seconds, because I'm just finishing this off. As a result, it becomes all a little more smooth the way you communicate. I, I'm not really being interrupted, I'm just trying to finish this before I, well, if I let a ring, then it goes to work, well, I have to follow up on that. You know what, I don't want to, so I pick it up and I'm being interrupted. 
But an SMS saying, hey, can you help me out? Give me two seconds, finish this, and say, yeah, now I'm available. So the etiquette, the way people are collaborating and, change, and communicating is changing too, which is very interesting too. And the last step you will see here is about you know, what are kind of conference calls I've scheduled. So I could go either get a pop-up or a reminder from Outlook saying, hey, the conference call's being uh, scheduled, or I can go straight in here and you know, I can come in. Now obviously, um, if you are anybody like, uh, like me, who spends a lot of time in, um, in emails and in, uh, in Outlook, what are you um, uh, going to do to communicate? It's probably using Outlook, right? So the, the nice thing about Skype and Business as well is it's very tightly integrated with the Office application, as you would expect. So if I, for example, I'm just actually bringing up here the, the social the alias and uh, in Microsoft, it is a Microsoft social alias. It's not to do with Microsoft. It's just if you want to sell or buy anything, this is the place to go. So it's a kind of I, completely random. So forgive me if there's anything uh, that shouldn't really be there. But things like uh, I don't know, somebody is trying to sell or kit toys for sale. Well, maybe I'm interested in some kit uh, toys. And you can see there's a, an email about it and say, hey. Normally, what we do is say you send a reply saying, "Hey, I'm interested," and you get this whole email trail about things. The thing is, because of instant messaging and presence, quite a lot of the unnecessary email trails are being cut out. Because now, if I say I'm interested, you know what? I'm not gonna gonna reply to my email. I'm just gonna say, "Hey, I just gonna I am." So the interest bit as well is it automatically takes the subject of the email as the subject of my I am. So when I just kind of contact this person, I'm saying, "Hey, I'm interested." I don't have to explain this about the kids' stories and so on. So it's again setting the context of how and what I want to try to co communicate with. Even if the subject is not enough, when I start typing, you will get also the URL of the, the place I start this conversation from. So that means you will get the URL of the email. So you can quickly click on the URL and say, oh yeah, that's the email I sent about the kids' stories. I know what it's talking about. So it's again all about setting the context. Um, the last thing I want to show you is uh, very quickly how you set up a, a meeting, right? So, <clears throat> I, uh, we are around here now, so I can just open a meeting, uh, invite, I say pick uh, make a Skype meeting, and that's all you do. So automatically this is going to be populated with um, the information that you need for your, for your meeting. So if I'm sending this out internally, you know, people are uh, trying to join this, I'll send this to the back as well. Um, and I sent this, then automatically you get the invite, as you would expect, you can click on the link. If it's used Skype for Business, that's the way you would go to the meeting. If it's, uh, I send this thing outside the office and the person doesn't have a Skype for Business uh, client, they would just actually click the, 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 the URL and they just use a browser. And even with that browser client, you can do forms, video, desktop sharing. So it doesn't really diminish the, uh, the capability, but if you have already Skype for Business installed, it just uses, it actually never sees that client. Okay. So if I send this out. Sky, yeah. sky, That's a good question. So at the moment, um, you will still then use the browser. So if they just have ordinary Skype installed, it wouldn't really kind of ask you if you want to use that. It will just say, hey, it already opens up the browser client. There is a plan to actually, at the later stage, to add uh, the Skype consumer to it. So if you have Skype consumer, that you can actually just dial in straight away if you choose to use your consumer client, but it's not the active one. Okay. So what happens is I set up the meeting, I can then say, hey, I want to uh, open it up as you would normally do, or again, very quickly, say join online. Again, it's just all about reducing the number of clicks to be able to join a meeting, right? So rather than actually now opening the meeting and find trying to click the URL, I say join online, and it should automatically bring me to that uh, conference call. Okay, so I can actually say, hey, do I would like to take the voice by using my Skype this client? Well, I'm using the round table device, so that's okay. Or maybe I'm on the go and actually, you know what? Call me on mobile. <coughs> okay. Or if you wanted to, even on a third party phone. So maybe you are in the process of actually rolling out Skype for Business, or maybe you said, I want to wait a little bit. I just want to use Skype for Business for, for meetings. I can use it with my Mitel or my Cisco or whatever we can have. Okay, so I'm going to just very quick show you this. And what I'm really trying to show you here is that. As we saw before, the interface is exactly the same whether I'm using an ad hoc conference call, whether I'm using a scheduled conference call, uh, all the options that I have for desktop share, I guess that's where it's all going to get. So again, from a user perspective, to be able to actually take part in conference calls, whether created on the fly or actually doing scheduling, is the same experience. So make it easy to use. Okay, so let me stop here. 